Hey guys, this is Jacolia of Jacolia Gems. Thank you for once again coming back home, family. <laughs> now, for those of you that happen to be here for the very first time, I definitely hope that you hear something today that will persuade you not only to stay, but to abide, kick up your shoes and relax your feet and go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into a follow-up video about the black gods of Ireland and just black gods everywhere. So we know a lot of people just got done celebrating Thanksgiving and a lot of Hebrew Israelites, I saw you guys, which is not a, um, counseling now, it's not oxymoronic because there are many Hebraic groups for those of you who begin to say, oh, you shouldn't say Hebrew Israelite, well you should just like you should say Hebrew Edomite, Hebrew, Hebrew Ishmaelite, Hebrew, Midianite, so on and so forth. So a lot of you begin to condemn and call it pagan and those and then some more of you begin to say, hey, I no longer celebrate, but I will not, you know, downplay my family that decides to because once were some of us, it is only by the grace of yod Hey wav that we have come into our Hebraic identity. There are also a small number that I began to see to talk about the Hebraic links between Thanksgiving and um, this festival that we began to call Sukkot. So I'm not sure if some of you remember, there was a video that I did, I wanna say last year around this time, about the green corn goddess of the Native Americans. And she was worshiped by them as the God of agriculture. And she was worshiped during this time, the time of harvest. And during the time of harvest, the Native Americans, specifically the Mississippian Native Americans, which would give you, you know, the civilized five, as we already know, and some more as well, they began to have something very similar to Peshach, literally. And this was considered their feast of first fruits, where they would fast for four days to prepare to dwell in tents or booths so that they can offer up sacrifices to the deity. They begin to fast, to purge, and to purify themselves from their sins. And they also drank a drink, which caused them to vomit, to begin to erect these, um, to begin to extract, excuse me, these unclean spirits that were erected on the inside of them. Now, when we begin to look into the biblical narrative we see that all of these things were mentioned as Hebraic markers amongst the pre-exilic and post-exilic Israelites. Now, specifically pre-exilic Israelites definitely offered up sacrifices of animals, of oils, libations with wine, so on and so forth. Now, when we begin to look at Peshach or Passover, we see that the Israelites held this in order to slaughter the lamb, to cover the doorposts of their homes, to be protected from the destroyer. And I want you to put a pin in there. And the following day after Passover, because when I, when I see the blood, see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you, okay? Hallelujah. What y'all be saying? Shondo. <laughs> y'all know in the Apostolic Church, they said that Shondo, we gon' I'm going to ask one of my rabbis to really ask them what Shondo means. So, with the Passover, the following day was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. What did the Apostle Paul begin to say that a little leaven, leaven holds up? What does leaven represent? Leaven literally is a representation of 
sin. And so during this time, the Israelites were not to be found with anything that had yeast in it because yeast is a rising agent. And when you talk about being puffed up, according to scripture dynamics, this is talking about your flesh raising up because your flesh is a what? Sacrifice. It's a grain sacrifice. So when Yeshua Bar Yosef or Jesus, son of Joseph, the Messiah began to say, take of my flesh, that was a grain sacrifice. And when he said, drink of my blood, that was a blood sacrifice. That was a drink offering. Hello, that was a libation, y'all. So when we begin to see that, that sin rises up, these are the same things that the Native Americans were practicing during this time and then when you think about first fruits what is supposed to happen with the first fruits the levites were the first fruits originally they were considered to be the first born and then the firstborn of every household specifically the male were to be sacrificed to the deity y'all and then you have pente, which means 50 in Greek. So 50 days after Passover, which will give you seven Sabbaths plus one day, which will end up falling on Sunday, which is how you begin to have the apostolic Pentecostal church movement that begins to say, when I see the blood, oh, yes, <laughs> I will pass, I will pass over you. So all of these things are Hebraic markers, even in the black church. That's why I'm dibbling all of that in so that y'all can see what's going on so then you have your first fruit so we know that there were three times three times that the israelites were commanded the men were commanded to make a pilgrimage who are the pilgrims the sephardic jews and Moors who make pilgrims who make pilgrimages the arabs when they go to Mecca and they march around a black stone Kaaba, which was given to them at the pre-Arabic, because at first they were pagans too. These are our brothers and sisters and our cousins, Ishmaelites and Edomites. You have some Nabataeans and some Hagarines out of Hagar and Ishmael, which is still the sea line of Abraham. And then you have your original Arabs who came out of Jokatan, son of Shem. But you always you also have your Cushitic Arabs who are Sabines who came out of Sheba, but we also see the name Sheba and Saba and under um Shem as well. So you begin to see that even Arabs was also not only in the Arabian Peninsula, but in the Sudan. And this is why they begin to call African Americans Nubians. No, those are Kushites, and Kushites even take the word Nubian as a derogative term analogy and i actually just met a cushitic ethiopian man he told me he wanted to marry me y'all he told me that he was gonna give me an ammo y'all and i said oh you must know that i'm a black irish from montserrat <laughs> you must know that my people be a black irish from the 1848s and they came over here how do you know i was gonna like an ammo how do you know that y'all but no i did just meet the ethiopian man and he was telling me he said, I want to take you home to my family in Ethiopia, to my cousin. And when you walk in the house, you take your shoes off. I told you, kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB Sankofa. <laughs> he said she would wash my feet. I said, because we're Hebrews. And he said, yeah. He said, and then my mom and my aunt would cook for you. I said, oh, really? I said, so you, do you consider yourself tribe of Don or tribe of Judah? And his eyes got big. Y'all see how all that, all that line up? All of that line up, all that history. And so when we begin to look at these green corn festivals, we see that there's an agriculture grain God in the Bible. We celebrate our feast days according to time, seed, and harvest. When we begin to pray for the provider during famine, when we begin to look into Mesopotamia, we see a grain goddess by the name of Nisaba, N-I-S-A-B-A. She was known to be one of the oldest writers 
um, and one of the oldest scribes. What if I began to tell you that she had a husband by the name of Haya? Mm. Now, come on, y'all. I know in church you didn't heard the old church mother say Haya. When I think about the goodness, okay, they would say Haya. Haya is a Hebrew word. It's a Hebrew root. And this was a black god. And Haya had a relation to the grain god of Erelin, who went by the name of Cernos. C-E-R-N-N-O-U-S. Cern? Cern? Do y'all know what Cern is? Do you know what Cern is? No? Okay, so I'm going to tell you. Cern is a particle accelerator over in Switzerland. Illinois has particle accelerators. Like, a lot of cities and states have particle accelerators. So if you know anything about Flash in particular, the first episode of Flash people begin to gain their powers because this is particle accelerator because you know they're looking for the god particle and every time this particle accelerator goes off it changes the time continuum and it allows the veil between the natural and the spiritual world to become thinner and they have people that have reported that they hear alien like noises so when we go to the movie transformers and Samuel Witwicky <laughs> began to hear these alien-like noises and he began to write in ancient Hebrew and Kanaeer form. And they went down into Antarctica. What do the Masons and stuff teach about Antarctica? Where are the aliens coming up from? Even in the, the TV show Charmed, when those four Nephilim, the offspring of the gods, those giants, the Gibber, the men of renown came from under the ice. Why can't we go to Antarctica? So when you begin to look at CERN, there's a statue outside of CERN and there's Shiva, which was an Indian deity on the inside of CERN. And Shiva is known to be the destroyer. Who were the Israelites being kept from during Passover, the destroyer? During Thanksgiving, these Native Americans broke bread with the Hispanic Sephardic Jews from Spain, as well as the other Sephardic Jews from Ireland. And when the subjugating between these two groups came in, it's because the conquistadors who were also Moors and Jews, but they sided with the Catholic Church, began to subjugate the Native Americans and war against the Protestants who were protesting the Catholic Church, the Puritans who came in to purify. And so they view the Hebrew Native Americans as Jews too, whether they were Edomites and they were forcibly converted in a Hasmonean dynasty or whether they were blood-born Jews. So when they came in, they baptized these Hebraic Native Americans, just like they baptized the West Africans, because they began to see that they were still keeping Babylonian practices by worshiping the grain goddess that we used to worship in Mesopotamia. The same thing with the West Africans and with the Caribbeans. These are literally different group of Hebraic people subjugating and forcing each other into indentured servitude for breaking the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Now, we can keep pre practices. We can have altars. We can burn herbs. We can do libations and all of these things because that was part of our cultures before we were exiled into captivities. The problem is, is when we offer up offerings, cakes, and libations to intermediary deities that yod heh may use to do things on his behalf but we are supposed to sacrifice to him and to him alone asking that el elion use him as the hand to dance to manifest on our situation so i hope you guys are able to tie these things in and to know that these gaelic Irish Druid people were also Hebrews. We've talked 
several times about the black gods of Ireland, and we have linked in the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Dan, the Moors, and the merchants. We're going to get more into the Hebraic roots of all of these nations so that we can begin to etch out history for ourselves. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. This is Chakoya of Chakoya Gems. Thank you for once again coming back home, family. Bye.